Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. In this episode, we're going to be talking about blue tarantulas. Many of us in the hobby are simply fascinated by the blue ones, which is why these species receive so much attention and always remain in demand. However, those new to the hobby who are not yet familiar with the differences between New World and Old World tarantulas, or who have never kept a moisture-dependent species, are often ill-equipped to deal with these temperament and husbandry challenges. Enticed by the idea of keeping one of these cerulean lookers, they don't know enough to consider some of the more important details like speed, temperament, ease of husbandry, or venom potency. The fact is, there are some lovely blue tarantulas that can make great pets for beginners. And conversely, there are some other species that are best kept by those with some experience. Every time I post a video featuring a blue species, I receive several comments from new or interested hobbyists asking if the species is beginner friendly. With that in mind, I decided to put together this little guide to show off some of the more popular species, introduce a couple lesser known ones, and to give keepers some information to consider before they acquire one. This video is only meant to be an overview. There are likely to be many, many more blue tarantulas introduced into the hobby after this video is published, and I certainly didn't cover every sapphire stunner. So with that in mind, be sure to do the proper research before acquiring a new tarantula, no matter what the color. And always remember that temperaments can vary from specimen to specimen and even from molt to molt. Although I may talk about some species being more laid back than others, always keep in mind that there are exceptions. One man's sweetheart can be another man's nightmare. Also, if while watching this video you find that you want more specific information on a particular species, just click the card at the top of the screen to visit a husbandry video on that spider. So, enough of me talking, let's learn a bit more about some of our beautiful blue tarantulas. Our first entry on this list is actually a bit more purplish, but its common name of Singapore Blue has many seeking out this azure arboreal. Omothymus violosipes is a stunning, lithe, long-legged spider that can grow to impressive sizes, with females reaching up to 9 inches. As if its massive leg span isn't impressive enough, this species sports gorgeous metallic blues, indigos, and violets, making it one of the hobby's true lookers. Unfortunately, the old Velocipes is a very shy and elusive species that, if kept correctly, is rarely seen. I've had my girl for close to seven years, and I've only caught her out and about three times. As an old world tarantula, this species is also very fast, offering an incredibly painful bite should it feel forced to use its fangs for defense. Furthermore, the Singapore Blue is a moisture-dependent species, meaning that it needs damp substrate throughout its life to thrive. As a result, most hobbyists consider the species to be one of the true advanced spiders and one that would be more than a handful for the average beginner. Also, it should be mentioned that the species is sexually dimorphic and only the females sport those blue and purple tones with males maturing out at around 5 inches with an overall green coloration. The old Velocipes is an undeniably beautiful tarantula and an awesome addition to any collection. That said, those looking for a colorful display tarantula to admire may be left disappointed by this elusive spider. Wild-caught specimens of this next species are commonly sold in pet stores, making it the first blue tarantula many people ever see in person. The Cyriopegapus lividus, or cobalt blue, is one of the most widely available and well-known blue tarantulas in the hobby. Slings are often quite inexpensive, especially for a blue tarantula, and wild-caught adult females can usually be purchased for around $50, making them very enticing. Many new keepers see photos of this spider with extraordinary blue legs and immediately add it to their wish list. And who can blame them, as the cobalt blue is a beautiful and impressive spider. Unfortunately, this species is absolutely not for the majority of new keepers. First off, as an old world species, it is fast, defensive, and packs a very potent bite. It is also a fossorial, or burrowing, species that needs moist substrate throughout its life to thrive. The fact is, if you set your seat lividus up correctly, you won't ever see it. Much like the aforementioned O. Velocipes, this is a very shy and reclusive species that will spend 99% of the time in its burrow. Those who try to set up their spiders on shallow substrate so that they can see them more will end up with a lot of webbing and a very nervous and defensive spider. Many consider the seed lividus one of the hobby staples and a spider that every serious hobbyist should keep at some point, and I tend to agree. 
That said, their moisture requirements and potential defensive nature make these guys more suitable to experienced hobbyists. For those who don't mind if their tarantula isn't completely blue, just so long as the blue is striking, the next species is definitely one to check out. A smaller spider reaching a max size of 3 to 4 inches or 7.6 to 10 centimeters, the Sud Hapalopus species blue is a tarantula with an overall blue-gray body with a brilliant electric powder blue rump. What the species lacks in full blue coloration, it more than makes up for with its simply radiant bum. Although this spider is fast and can be a bit skittish, the Sud Hapalopus species blue would much rather run and hide than stand its ground. As a New World species, it also lacks the potent venom of the other blue tarantulas on this list and would much rather boogie than bite. Now, although informed beginners may do okay with this spider, there are a few challenges to be aware of. First off, slings start off super tiny and are very slow growing. The species blue can be a very picky eater and some folks report that theirs took quite a long time between molts. Those starting with slings should be prepared to wait a couple years to see those signature blue tones. This species is also quite skittish and will bolt if it feels threatened. This may come as a bit of a shock to keepers accustomed to keeping more sedentary tarantulas. That said, they sure are pretty and adults are quite visible, often as chewing dens and burrowing to sit right out in the open. Those who are not turned off by the slow growth rate and smaller size will find a lot to love with this spunky blue looker. Some of the species on this list are completely blue while others only have blue legs or even blue butts. However, the next species on this list only has blue on part of its front pairs of legs and on its calicera, but it's the breathtaking shade of that blue that entices so many keepers. Up next is the Kilobrachi species Electric Blue, a sleek Asian fossorial species that sports some of the most jaw-droppingly beautiful legs in the hobby. Although this tarantula might have the least amount of blue on it compared to others on the list, there is no denying that its dazzling electric blue tones might be the most striking. Under the light, those front legs seem to glow with luminance of their own and tend to really pop in photos. Sadly, this is a species better kept by those who already have some experience with tarantulas. Kilobrachi species are very fast, with some reporting that theirs are particularly defensive. Couple this with a potent old world bite and you have a tarantula that could prove to be quite a nightmare for a new keeper. Kilobrachis are also burrowing species that require moist substrate from slings to adults, which makes them a bit trickier to keep. And like the C. lividus, if you set these guys up correctly, you won't see them very often. Keep them on shallow substrate so that you can enjoy those legs and you will have plenty of webbing and one ornery spider. I have two of these wonderful tarantulas, and although I don't see them all that much, when I do catch those legs emerging from their dens, it's quite the event. For those looking for more quality over quantity when it comes to their azure spiders, the Kilobrachi species Electric Blue can be an excellent addition to the collection. For folks new to the hobby who really want some blue in their collection, the Homeomus species Blue Peru can be an attractive option. This relatively gentle and calm New World species sports an overall bluish sheen with contrasting salmon highlights and stripes. Although lacking the intense hues of some of the other species on this list, the Blue Peru is still a gorgeous spider with a beginner-friendly personality. As far as cautions are concerned, there are few. The Homeoma species Blue Peru can be quite small as a sling, and the growth rate for the species can be on the slow side. It also should be mentioned that the blues on this species are mostly on the legs and they lack the vibrancy of some of the other species on the list. Although slings can be a bit nervous and jumpy, adults are generally described as more laid back and curious. Due to its ease of care and relatively gentle nature, the Homeoma species blue can make a good entry level spider for someone looking to add a blue tarantula to their collection. Next up is a gorgeous full blue New World tarantula from the country of Brazil. The Tarina Pelma Sazme, or Brazilian Blue, catches a lot of attention from new hobbyists due to its full blue coloration and for being one of the few blue New World tarantulas. Care for this species is also quite simple, and even slings are very hardy, appreciating a bit of moisture and some substrate to dig in. They tend to be good eaters overall, and adults can be fairly visible spiders. I have two females in my collection, and they are truly remarkable animals. Many folks will hear New World species and immediately assume that this spider would make for a good beginner. 
Unfortunately, the pea sosme can be a particularly skittish and sometimes defensive tarantula. Smaller specimens have urticating or irritating hairs that they can kick from their abdomens if they feel threatened, and many won't hesitate to use them. My older specimens went through a very defensive stage where they would threat posture and slap their legs whenever I opened their enclosures for feeding or maintenance. Instead of bolting back to their dens to hide, they would stand their ground in a fierce display of defensiveness. I've heard from more than a few new hobbyists who found this type of behavior from their specimens to be quite intimidating. Also, although many keepers post photos of their spiders with bright, seemingly electric blue tones, many of these photos have been altered to exaggerate the coloration. This species tends to appear more dark blue or black in normal light, but will pop with an iridescent blue under the correct lighting. For those with some experience who are not turned off by a potentially defensive spider, the pea sosame can make a beautiful addition to their collection. For many hobbyists looking to get their first blue tarantula, the Chromatopelma cyaneopubescens, or green bottle blue tarantula, represents the best entry level species. The GBB holds the distinction as the only blue spider that frequently makes it onto the best beginner species lists. Sporting gorgeous blue legs, a metallic turquoise carapace, and orange abdomen, many consider this Venezuelan tarantula to be one of the most visually striking in the hobby. This species is an excellent hunter, even as a sling, and thrives on dry substrate. Slings are readily available and quite hardy, making them an attractive option to folks looking to raise up their tarantulas from babies. As an added bonus, this species is a prolific weber that, as an adult, will sit out in the open making it an excellent showcase spider. Now, although the species can be beginner friendly, there are a few caveats that hobbyists need to be aware of. First off, the GBB can be incredibly skittish, and they are capable of bursts of speed that can be quite shocking and intimidating to hobbyists more accustomed to working with slower Brachypelma and Gramostola species. Also, many report that their specimens will kick hairs from their abdomens when disturbed. My two females went through quite the stretch where they would kick every time I opened their enclosures. However, giving them deeper enclosures with a bit more height can usually help mitigate the ornery and defensive temperaments. For those with minimal experience in the hobby who are desperately looking to get their own blue tarantula, the GBB can be an excellent option. Widely considered to be one of the true jewels of the hobby, the Oligoxystrae diamanthiensis is a stunning Brazilian species that reaches a max size of around 3 to 4 inches or 7.6 to 10 centimeters. Just don't call it the mini GBB, however, as O. diamantinensis fans bristle at this dismissive moniker, with many feeling this diminutive spider's beauty surpasses that of the C. cyaneal pubescens. One of the few New World blue tarantulas, the O. diamantinensis is a relatively shy and skittish spider that will blanket its enclosure in thick webbing. Sporting vibrant blue legs, a blue-green carapace, and a dash of bright red on its abdomen, this species' colors tend to pop in almost any lighting. Slings of the species start off quite tiny but are fast-growing and brutal hunters. They are also incredibly fast and skittish, which can make them a bit of a handful for new keepers. Most report that Brazilian blue dwarf beauties can calm down a bit as they put on size, with some even saying that their specimens will tolerate handling. Still, many hobbyists find that the Brazilian blue beauties remain skittish and reclusive as adults, so caution is advised with maintenance and rehousings. Overall, this is a fast-growing, hardy spider that is easy to raise from a sling and that can be quite visible as an adult. And there certainly is no way to discount its smashing appearance. Those who are aware of their speed and potential skittishness may do just fine with this diminutive stunner. With its pearlescent powder blue carapace, sapphire legs, and cream colored body, the next species is one of the most popular and enthralling available. The Monocentropus balfouri, or Socotra Island blue baboon, has long been one of the most sought after tarantulas in the hobby. Not just pretty to look at, this species is also one of the few tarantulas that can be successfully kept in a communal setup. A quick search on YouTube will yield dozens of incredible examples of these blue bombshells living peaceably with other spiders of the same species. For many, the M. Balfouri is simply one of the coolest spiders in the hobby. Unfortunately, this is another old world species, meaning that they are fast, potentially defensive, and pack a potent bite. This is not a beginner species, although it is often recommended as a beginner to keeping old world tarantulas due to its relatively shy personality. 
Still, when threatened, it's capable of impressive bursts of speed or intimidating threat postures. Those new to the hobby will want to get some experience under their belts before attempting to keep this spider. This tarantula can also be quite secretive, and many report that they only catch glimpses of their specimens before they quickly bolt to their dens to hide. For experienced keepers looking to add a splash of blue to their collections, the M. Balfouri makes an awesome addition. Generally more visible and less defensive than other blue Old World tarantulas, this species can make an awesome introduction to keeping Old World spiders. And, for keepers looking for a bit of extra challenge, a communal setup can make for a fascinating addition to their collection. Finally, although this was never intended to be one of those subjective top 10 lists, there is one species that tends to be more revered and sought after than any others on this list. Over the years, I have received dozens of inquiries about this tarantula by folks who have seen photos of them online and who are desperate to learn more about them. I'd shared the story of how I thought the first photo I had ever seen of this spider was photoshopped, and I immediately dismissed it as fake. It's definitely a real species, however, and one that is still highly coveted by new and experienced keepers alike. The last tarantula on this list is the amazing piece of Letharia metallica, or Goody Sapphire Ornamental. This lithe, elegant arboreal species sports glorious sapphire tones with brilliant splashes of yellow on its legs. Unlike some of the other tarantulas on this list that only have blue legs or bums or who have to be under the lights for the color to show, the Goody is fully blue in any light. As with all spiders in the genus Pisolotheria, the P. metallica is not a beginner tarantula. Although most P. Letharia are shy and reclusive, choosing to flatten out and use their natural camouflage to hide rather than stand their ground, they can move incredibly fast when threatened. Also, although they aren't particularly likely to bite, they do possess some of the strongest venom amongst tarantulas. A bite from a P. metallica would be extremely unpleasant and possibly debilitating. I've raised 10 of this species, including several in a communal setup, and they are generally rather coy, although I do catch mine out in the open quite a bit. Compared to other old world species on this list, these guys are generally more laid back and less defensive. For folks who are ready for advanced old world species, the P. metallica stands as one of the hobby's all-time great blue beauties. So I hope you enjoyed that. Again, this was supposed to be more of a survey and an introduction. I didn't get into specifics because I've done husbandry videos and a lot of just general videos, including rehousings on many of these species. So my hopes are that people that are interested in one or find one that they think might suit what they're looking for can go on, click on those little cards or just go do a search and find some more information on them. Again, the key to this hobby is doing the research. Don't get lazy. Don't start picking stuff up and doing the research after the fact that's not fair to the spider. And not fair to you and your family sometimes, especially if you pick up something that might be a little beyond your current level of expertise. So I'm hoping that as time goes on, we see some more blue tarantulas. I personally love them. I know there's some out there that think they're overrated, but I, I don't know. For me, it's just cool seeing something sporting that type of color, although I will say that I've kind of got a thing for the green ones now, so I'm on the hunt for those as well. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you like the video enough to subscribe, very much appreciate. You can click that circle right up in there. If you want to check out some more videos ahead of time to see if it's worth subscribing to, I don't blame you. You can click the ones over there. Please leave a comment. Love getting comments. I try to answer every single one of them. It can take a couple days, but know that if you comment, I will answer it. That will do it for this one. I hope you guys are all safe and healthy, and I'll catch you guys next time.